All right, welcome back, you guys. It's been a while. It's another episode of The Real. Uh, guess what? Kelly's here. Hey, guys. <laughs> Wow. Kelly's, it's been a while. <laughs> Kelly's finally here. It's an honor. She also showed up an hour late. Okay, let's not do that. Let's, let's not, not just throw shade, boy. okay? Boy. I live an hour away. Wow. The fam is back. The All right. The full back. the full cast. Your 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 full crew of hosts is back for the summertime. So um yeah, we are here to talk about gender and sexuality in media. Uh, we have two uh, good friends of ours on the podcast to help sort of unpack our feelings about the whole situation. Uh, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Violet. Hi, I'm Carter and I'm pretty gay. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I started off on the topic. So yeah, um, uh, for the past couple of episodes, we've been talking about uh, various aspects of media and how people are represented. It's been a common thread. Strangely enough, um, it's sort of kind of become like the, I was joking earlier, this has kind of become like the diversity podcast or like the Wham! podcast almost because our past couple of episodes. Diversity. <laughs> I mean, it, it makes sense. We're pretty diverse, if not in um, gender, but in sexuality and all other forms of mm -hmm. diversity I think that's out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't seem too weird. I mean, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not weird at all. It's just, it's, it was just funny to me that like our past couple of episodes have been like, it's been like a different sort of aspect, which is very cool. But yeah, um, here we are talking about gender and sexuality uh, during Pride Month. By the way, happy Pride Month. Happy Pride. Yeah, happy, happy Pride. Pride Who went to um, Pride, Pride Parade? Um, oh yeah, I went to Baltimore Pride uh, last weekend. It was pretty cool. What was um, it? Yeah, they had a dance party on Charles and North, mm -hmm. um, and it was lit. And um, apparently, dudes were checking me out, and said oh, dudes were hey. checking me out. But like, I guess I was too like oblivious to really notice, and I was just like, "Wait, what? People looked my way." No, yeah, because so. you, you, you had them, you had them pole shorts on, huh? <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I was dressed normally. I was dressed gay the first time, <laughs> but then. So the bus like took like an hour. So we went back um, and just went back to my place and chilled for a bit. And then uh, I was all sweaty from walking. So I changed into like a different outfit, which was basically pajamas. Nice. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was like a t-shirt and like sweatshorts, but still. Mm. But after that, then we went out. So I wasn't as uh, queer as I wanted to look. Sorry I couldn't be there with you. Okay. And we had this whole plan last year that we were going to go to the Baltimore one. Mm -hmm. But fun fact, um, AwesomeCon now has a Pride Alley, which is like all about, you know, um, sexuality and, and exploring that in, in comics and in like the nerdum that is my life. That's pretty cool. I've been hearing about a lot of different like gender slash sexuality progression in different comics. Um, if I can remember one off the top of my head, I don't remember the name of the hero, but it was a it was um, a lesbian Latina woman, um, and oh, crap, I don't remember like the full like backstory behind it. But I was like, how often do you find a POC that is LGBT and a woman in mm -hmm. a Marvel comic? That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I guess we can use that to sort of segue. Uh, into sort of our first topic. So uh, for our panel, um, what are some what are some of uh, your favorite uh, things going on right now in the media currently that have to do with like LGBT representation? Anything that you've seen like recently that you'd like to talk about or take note of? Well, I know Moonlight was really big for a lot of people, not yes. just because it was, you know, gay representation, but because it was black gay representation, yes. which is like a lot more rare. And, you know, we really don't see a lot of that in modern media and the fact that, you know, it got so big and it got so much attention from everyone. Like, I really like the fact that that's out there now. And I hope that it can pave the way for more stuff like that, you know? Yeah, honestly, I mean, my, the one I've been noticing more too is also like uh, Black Gay. It's um, Kevin Abstract and the whole Bronk Hampton like mm -hmm. um, crew they do. 
uh, hip hop <laughs> alternative music, and it's just so like it's so refreshing to hear sort of also just a voice from a young uh, gay person doing hip hop because most of the time in hip hop it's kind of like brushed off against or like you know DMX uh, where the hood at uh, yeah kind of kind of lyrics. Yeah, as much as I love hip hop, it's still very much a problematic culture in terms of you know misogyny and like its views on like the LGBT community. So it's very refreshing when you see people and artists like uh, Frank Ocean, uh, Kate Trinata, um, Kevin Abstract, uh, even um, what's her name, Young Ma. I don't know who that or, is. Oh. The one that you know that's uh, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Sid. Sid, yes, Sid. Yeah. Sid. Um, It's really refreshing to see all these LGBT voices in a culture that has that that, in they participate in a culture that they themselves are marginalized in, um, which is actually interesting because I saw like this one Tumblr post um, that you put up. It was like uh, how like. (laughs) I don't mean to call you out. It's, it's you fine. Sure? I didn't know. Oh. I logged a lot, so I'm like, I don't know what post you're talking about. It's like, um, it, it was like this one post. Uh, it was like, um, intersectional bigotry. Like, you know, even though like you yourself, like you could be like of color or you could be like a certain um, minority, you could still be prejudiced towards other minorities. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. still very much an issue. Like, for example, um, I know that like we, I, it was in discussion like somewhere, but like. Um, it's it's still kind of interesting how you know there's been like a small sort of push for rep, you know LGBT representation, but the majority of LGBT LGBT material that you see is like white gay males. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's that was just interesting. Did anybody else have any thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, just the fact that there is no variety in what like. LGBT representation has come to mean and I don't even not even just like white gay males but attractive skinny Mm -hmm. white gay males or muscular yeah Yeah. like you don't ever see anything else that falls outside of that little like box that we've created and we're supposed to be thankful for that when the community is so diverse and there's so much there and yeah. it's just not being shown. You know, representation matters, not just seeing gay people on TV, but seeing gay people that look like you on TV. Right. I think the, the reason is that is because it's it sells more when you put a stereotype up because then you can actively say, oh, that's what that is. Right. Um, whereas, you know, a lot of times, well, I feel like a lot of characters and representation and media of like LGBTQ, it's their sexuality or their gender identity is their main component of their character. Where, you know, although it's great that this is being talked about and that this is like in the forefront of what we're trying to do, I think that it should be more of a secondary characteristic rather than, you know, I agree. that's all that they are. And this happens all the time, especially with mainstream, is that, you know, you have. I mean, the other day there was um, like an article where um, a teacher had done something and he was getting recognized, but the headline was gay teacher. But he's not a gay teacher. He's a teacher who happens to be yeah. gay. Yeah. And I think that distinction is is what thro- is throwing things off. And I feel like, you know, then now we have this idea of what, you know, LGBTQ is based off of what we see in the media. And that's not what it is. And that's not what it means to most people. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of, it, it's, for some reason we're trying, like, uh, what am I trying to say? We want to normalize the fact that LGBTQIA plus people exist, but we're also trying to, like, make it seem, make it known that there are people that are gay or bisexual or pansexual, and that's where that struggle comes in with the whole, like, stereotype or whatever, because, like, these producers and, like, filmmakers and all that, they're just like, yeah, we want to include these gay characters, but, like, some of them don't really know how because they don't live that lifestyle or, like, they Mm. don't have any close friends with that lifestyle, so it's just like, uh, he has a gay, let's just make him talk about how much he loves men and all that other stuff. So it's it's a constant struggle with that. Yeah, honestly, um, also like growing up and figuring out like my sexuality, it was honestly really jarring to see that. I mean, I am white and I am, you know, gay, but like 
seeing that all the white gays on TV had to be like, you know, they had to be sassy. They had to always dress like colorful. And, and that was just kind of was really frustrating because I was like, like, I'm not like that. Am I, do I fit like into this gay role then? Like, am I really gay or is yeah. it like, and it really confused me when I was a kid. So it kind of, it's just really jarring and I, it's annoying that that ha still happens in media. Yeah, and writing like that that relies on stereotypes, again, is not representative of like the full spectrum of people in the community. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, people like that do exist, but making that the normal and everything else the other is so problematic. Mm -hmm. Like, we can't just have these cis white heterosexual writers be like, well, we gotta throw in, you know, a gay for ratings and let's just make them dress nice and be super effeminate and have a lisp. Like, that's almost worse than not having a gay character in there because you're yeah. not treating them as a human, you're treating them as like this token thing like and not walking. giving them, you know, a complex personality or a background or anything else besides I'm gay. Yeah, like a walking set of traits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. It's that, that, that actually, uh, I'd like to bring up like this one thing. Um, there, there's been certain uh, shows that have been really on the ball as of late in terms of um, representation, like LGBT representation, especially. Um, specifically, like this current season of Doctor Who, the current companion is a black queer woman named Bill Potts. Nice. And um, yeah, like the show like literally like just like the first like within like the first couple of lines of her like being introduced like the audience knows that she's gay and like from there it's not made a big deal it's literally just like a character trait like it's it's a normal character trait even the doctor is like i mean like of course like a character like the doctor would completely understand like with a perspective as vast as he has like he would complete like he would make a big deal out of it but i just love how like she's just essentially just another character like it's not anything out of the ordinary they don't sensationalize it she just likes women and and i and i love the fact that she's a black queer woman because like you don't really see a lot of that in the media like you see a lot of like you know white male gays most of the time and like you don't get to see that um that type of diversity in media anyway like you don't get to see like bisexuals or you have something to say yeah well speaking of that i mean in that realm of um i mean in that universe of doctor who there's also I mean, you saw you've seen torchwood yeah um and so the main character is you know captain jack hartness who is you know played by um john barrowman who is an openly gay actor um who is fantastic yeah but um so his character is a um a guy who who can't die and who um can well it's never really confirmed or not whether he's gay or bisexual i mean i know john thinks that you know perceives that, that character as gay but what's really beautiful about that is that he has a companion um named tonto who yeah um is that the name i think so it's been a while since i've seen torchwood yeah i think that's the name it's something like that um who is you know for all and purposes like with jack um, the main character. But what happens is towards the end is that you find that, you know, he's actually not gay, he's straight, but he loves Jack. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those really iconic, iconic um, uh, quotes is that, I love the man. And that's something that I thought was a really interesting take on that perspective of, um, you know, sexuality is that it's not just black and white where it's you're either gay or you're not. You can be, you can be considered, you can consider yourself straight mm -hmm. and then also fall in love with someone who isn't, you know, a part of that identity of being a heterosexual. Um, and I just thought that was an amazing, and I, I just know that that universe has like a very good um, interpretation of what it means to be um, an LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that was my little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it, sexuality is a spectrum. You know, a lot of people don't realize that. Like, it, it, you can do whatever you want. Like, if and you know, you can feel whatever you want. It's not, you know, as black and white as people think. Um, and I mean, it's been interesting, you know, m with me sort of it, like it didn't it didn't really pick up for me. And I didn't really uh, learn a lot about this community until I got older and like my friend pool expanded, uh, especially like, you know, sort of like my, my latter years of high school onward to college. Like 
it was pretty ins you know insular and like i grew up you know I, I grew up with a pretty you know relatively conservative nigerian family and you know like unfortunately like you know africans like they tend to be very homophobic uh so i you know i, I grew up uh i remember like my parents like would straight up say like you know uh this is a sickness or whatever like this is like a mental illness i'm like what 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 are you <laughs> what are you talking about um but then like it wasn't until like i grew up when like i had you know i i made more friends and like i got to like learn more perspectives that you know i had a more uh and i i'm, I'm still learning i still don't know a lot about the culture and i'm hoping to like learn more about the culture like on this podcast but um yeah, like it's been interesting, like me growing up in such, uh, you know, unfortunately a homophobic culture that, you know, I, I get to see at first hand, I guess, like, you know, what it really is like for people to sort of, you know, live their lives like as a part of this community. So. It's funny you say that. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, it's just, you know, it's just funny because I mean, I, I mean, I'm bi, um, but it's not something that I really it's it's funny because I don't consider myself a part of the LGBT community movement, which is oh is it two different is it like no 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 it's it's funny because like no there's this whole big thing about this community and I I just never really felt like that because I've I've never I don't know how to explain it I I don't know, I I don't like identify myself as bi because of the fact that I don't think of myself as straight nor bi if that makes any sense you just don't like labels. It's, it's like, it's, I wouldn't say that. It's just I just don't feel because I don't feel comfortable with putting that on me because, you know, tomorrow I might be like, you know, actually no, I like guys, and then the next day I'd be like, no, I like girls. It, like it all depends, and 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 it, and it causes a lot of tension, especially with my past relationship, not being able to really like define what I am, and like having that strict thing, hey, and I just it there's, feels. There's a fun little cop out word for if you don't know what you like, it's called queer. It's a it's a umbrella term that like, cause I understand what you mean, cause I'm bisexual too, and I've been struggling with that. But like, if you say queer, n no one's gonna know what that means, cause it's kind of like the umbrella term that's like you don't know what you are, but you know for a fact that you're not straight. So, just like, you know, I'll start using that. Yeah, but I I don't know. I just i like i i like the movement although i feel like lately the media has turned it into something that is almost unrecognizable what do you mean by that like i don't know how to explain it like the beginning of it was supposed to be all inclusive and then through different forms and the way that different people are trying to push it it's become something more of like you said, like a stereotype of what it means to be an LGBTQ. Like, the movement itself and the people that are involved are fine, but the way that it's portrayed makes it out to be something different, if that makes any sense. Um, and then within, you know, it's not as all-inclusive as, you know, it's led on to believe. Because, you know, being bi, I was never really accepted by my gay friends nor my straight friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know, I and mean, we've had multiple conversations about oh, that, and it's it's hard because you know there's with within this huge group of people, they all have their different differing different opinions on what it means to be in it, and you know that causes a lot of tension. Just like you know, it being an American, you know, there's different ideas of what that means and that can cause tension you know it doesn't make any sense so that's why i don't consider myself in the lgbt movement until it becomes something that it's supposed to like how, how it's supposed to be like the symbol that it is trying to be is not quite there if yeah. that makes any sense no that definitely makes sense there's a lot of bisexual erasure not just in like popular media and like among like all of the straights and hets you know, um, but also within the community. Like, I know for a fact there's a bunch of, like, cis gays out there who are like, oh, like, choose one, honey. Like, you can't be selfish mm -hmm. and try to, like, have it all for yourself. And, like, you know, as a pansexual, like, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to choose anything, first of all. Like, mm -hmm. you can't, I don't know, just, like, the idea that a lot of people still believe in that, like, 
oh, if you're bi or if you're pan, like, you're gonna settle with someone eventually. So, like, really, you're just gay and saying you're ex, or really, yeah. you're just straight and saying that you're bi, that's you know? Ridiculous. And that's something I hear a lot, yeah. you know, in 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a huge problem. Sorry, I continue. Yeah, well, what I hear a lot is I hear a lot of people tell me just because I'm pan that, uh, it's easier for me because, you know, and coming out's no big deal just because, you know, I can just be straight, you know, just date girls, you know, yeah, you know, I just ignore a whole side of my sexuality, just date girls, you know, so society accepts me. And that really pissed me off. I actually, um, because I made a video uh, about a YouTuber called Onision, and in a video he was like making fun of, uh, I think it was like Shane Dawson came out as bi, and he was like, uh, it doesn't even matter, why are you crying, you pussy, you're not even, you You can just date a girl, you, you're you dumb, dude. And I was like, alright, thanks straight, Onision, bro, thanks, <laughs> thanks bro, you're, straight. you're sick, <laughs> dude, straight. fucking yeah, dude. <laughs> I was like, yeah, sick, man. So yeah, I don't know, that just always pissed me off, the whole like, yeah, Carter, why don't you just, you know, if it's so hard to be gay, just like date, a, yeah. date, just date the straight The side. idea of like straight passing privilege, <laughs> like yeah. being a thing. Oh I can see God. you sign. Do you want to jump in? Please, no, please talk about okay. this. Okay, wait, wait, really quickly, for the viewers that may not be as inept in the terminology that LGBTQ use, can you explain? Corey just raised his hand. What, straight passing? <laughs> can, can you, can, no, uh, well, you can explain that, but I would say explain what um, pansexual means. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. oh Because I know that that's, I, mean, I know a lot of people that don't know that term, oh, and yeah. so. Okay, well, backing up just a little bit, pansexuality, uh, which is, that's what I am. Uh, it's basically attraction regardless of gender or with no, like, consideration of what gender that person might be. So basically, in the vast spans of this world around me, there's not any gender that I wouldn't date. I fall in love with the person, not their gender. So that's kind of what it means to me. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think everyone should be that way. Yeah, <laughs> Ideally, yeah. I, I'm pretty world. sure I identified that as a while, and then I got, I kept on getting, I kept on getting, um, uh, that's a cop out. Like you need to make a decision. <laughs> if um, a straight person said it, like, do not. Oh, no, don't actually, you know, I have a quote. I have a quote oh, from no. John Berman, who like I told him about this, and he said he said you know, well he said it to me, and I'm just gonna quote him. It's like never apologize for who you are or what you are, because if anyone disagrees or doesn't like it, tell them to piss off, because we've become we've been too mm -hmm. nice about you know our sexuality and you know having people understand it and if they don't like it just tell them piss off um but then also contrary to that he also says that you know d do it without animosity because a lot of times especially now with like you know people who are um, transgender or gender fluid or you know are still trying to figure it out um there's been a lot of um animosity towards using the wrong wordage for mm -hmm. someone um and i'm not saying you know I haven't personally like enco um, encountered it, but I've known people who've been straight up yelled at for using the wrong pronoun for someone. And the reason why that's not a good thing is because the fact that, you know, allowing people to make mistakes and learn from it is how you get them to start yeah. using the right word. But when you, you know, put someone down for use for not knowing or not or forgetting or, you know, for whatever reason, you know, that's causing more tension than doing good yeah I feel like it's all about education yeah, yeah. I feel like um actually not any I don't even know what I'm about to say <laughs> um could anybody else have any thoughts before we you had something or didn't oh. you have your hand raised he's turning on his mic I realize I can't turn it on during the recording yeah he can't take <laughs> he, so um, he can't chime yeah, he's yeah, here, Corey, yeah just, just lean in what is bypassing or straight passing? Straight passing. Straight passing. Straight straight passing. Mm. What? Yeah, it please. Okay. It's exactly so, what it sounds though. Okay, so as it was discussed before, there are many stereotypes that are associated with different members of LGBT communities, and what uh, quote unquote straight passing is is someone who is totally removed from all of those stereotypes uh, because that's often how people pick out members of LGBT uh, communities. And so with straight, pa you pass as a straight person because you're not the kind of person that is into wearing feminine clothes if you're a guy or wearing masculine clothes if you're a woman. Uh, um, and that's uh, that's essentially what it is. And like, 
I think it's a huge issue because that means you're putting stereotypes on sexuality when being gay has nothing to do with wearing pink or saying yes queen or whatever. Being gay is about being attracted to the same sex. So Yeah, and I've yeah. also heard straight passing privilege like defined in the terms of if it's a bisexual woman, let's say, and she's in a relationship with a man and you know, she's walking down the sidewalk <laughs> Kelly's holding pointing her, herself. Yeah, this is literally me. <laughs> holding hands years. with her boyfriend and then, you know, some <laughs> dusty gay looks so at them nice. and yeah. is like oh like you're not a real part of the community like look at you hold like in this heterosexual relationship mm -hmm. like you're so straight passing you don't really fit in here you know and like it sounds fake like it sounds like nobody would ever say that but they do yeah it's <laughs> yeah. they treat bias I've, so I've, terribly i've actually gotten that many times because yeah. I, I i up to recently i had been dating a guy for two years um and it was it was pretty serious and um it was it was during that time that I realized I, I didn't know how to tell people that I was bi without getting the same interaction with, which was oh no 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 you're dating a guy you're dating you're dating you know what's his face you know you're straight <laughs> but no so so wait does that mean like you can like kiss girls and he'd be fine. I go, no, that's still cheating. <laughs> and then I it's also would get, concept. I would get really random questions or I'd get, you know, oh, does that really count? I mean, you know, if you marry him, would you like, would you tell your kids that you're bi? And I'm like, yes. Yes, I don't, like, I don't know, like, why are you asking me this question? Like, like, this is all like within six months of me starting to date him. And I was like, uh, this is kind of weird. And then, um... This is happening in today's world, people. It was even harder because for him, because he knew, um, that I was, I, I liked girls, too. And so, one of his first reactions, um, and this was before, you know, I, I, I taught him a little bit more. He was very conservative when I met him. Um, oh, great, that means that I have to watch out for girls, too. And I'm like... Oof. I was like, what? That means so. That makes me feel so bad because I hate that means that, that. So much. Yeah, because that means that you don't respect me enough, or you don't think that I'm capable of being in a relationship without, you know, committing my full self to you. Like you have it in your head that, oh, because I'm bi, that means I'm gonna be looking at everyone else too. Like no. And that's a big stereotype surrounding bi people and pan people that you know mm -hmm. they can't be faithful because they're constantly feeling this temptation. Like, no, we can be just as faithful as anyone else. Like, I mean, I didn't think that I could have a, have a long-term, like because of that stereotype, I didn't think that I could have a long-term relationship for years. Cause I was like, oh, how am I gonna be able to do this? Cause what if I find someone else? What if I like start liking a girl, blah, blah, blah. Like I couldn't put someone through that. And then, you know, I started dating a guy and like, I didn't see anyone else. Like I didn't even look at anyone else for two years. Because you know? people associate uh, bisexuality and pansexuality with polygamy and it's two completely different things. Two different things like I am very capable of being monogamous like if I date a girl or a guy I will just be committed to that person I'm not gonna be looking around trying to like see which one I can get at like that's not that's not what it is oh like God, yeah where I learned about where, where I actually learned about um, like a lot of gay stuff I actually learned about it on 4chan fun fact <laughs> 4chan <laughs> slash LGBT slash was my home <laughs> page for a long time. I sit at work crying to myself reading that page and oh. getting all these gay opinions and stuff. Gay opinions. It was the first time I ever heard some like-minded gay stuff, so so I'd always go there. But um, yeah, there was a lot of hate for bisexual people there. They always thought that they were just cheaters and stuff, so yeah. There's also the issue of like, so I call it pre-gay. So sometimes uh, for an LGBT person, um, if they're actually gay, they will first come out as bisexual as to kind of like, kind of keep in the terms of like societal standards or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they realize that they do only like men or like women and they just come out as gay. So sometimes that gets put into the mix and it's really confusing. Mm -hmm. And so like, I mean, even I did had that issue where I was like, am I really bisexual or am I just pre-gay? Um, but like, it's, it's all about learning about yourself and trying to find a way to express who you are to other people so that they understand who you are as well. So. Yeah, not even that, but like not being afraid to try on different labels and see how exactly. well they fit you. Right. Because like not even just for sexuality, but for gender as well, because for a long time I was like, 
well, I don't know what the fuck's going on here. Mm -hmm. Like, something's up. Like, what is this? You know, and I would bounce around and, like, between different identity labels and nothing really fit until I got to non-binary, which, you know, I think it's important to be open to trying on a bunch of different labels. And I have, you know, friends that are trans dudes that, you know, they started off like being a cis female and, you know, they went by she and then they're like, hmm, I'm questioning my gender. And then they went by they and they changed their name a couple times. And now they're like, okay, I'm a boy. This is my name. Mm -hmm. And like, they had to go through that process to end up there. And so being afraid of labeling yourself as such, I think not only is bad in the name of like the whole pre-gay type mm -hmm. thing but it's also you're limiting yourself yeah yeah my, my friend just oh actually i don't I have no idea what they are um because it's been really hard to track especially since we, we've lost touch but you know i keep up with them on facebook i mean she's he's they they're like my best friend from 10 years um but it was really funny because just gonna stay with they. I'm gonna stick with they, because um, they aren't the normal, nor the the stereotypical normal transition into um, the gender fluidity, which is you know, life, I guess. Um, and so they started out as she, and then you know they started dating someone who was trans, and then you know, but it wasn't like a stark change where they started dressing as a guy. Like she, they never changed how they dressed and how they interacted with people. It was just, you know, how they felt. And I feel like that's the thing that a lot of people find difficult is when you can't discern like, oh, that's a guy dressing as a girl. They might be, they must be this. Or, you know, oh, that girl is dressing as a guy. Like when it's like those, that in between where, you know, you, you know, they're wearing normal clothes. Like there isn't, yeah. you know, they're not wearing gender specific clothing that can, you know. And I think that's the reality that most people are in is that they don't look for oh you know I'm a I'm you know genetically a guy I'm gonna and I want to be like I identify as a girl I'm gonna start wearing these girly clothes like that's not how it always works sometimes it's oh this shirt looks really cool I'm gonna put the shirt on and it's you know whatever they feel like they want to be that day and like that's more of how they are and so like that's where it gets I think for a lot of people it gets confusing when it's not that clear cut and which is why you know, labels are so like, people are so trigger happy with labels because it puts, you know, you're able to identify what it is. If it's that makes so sense. much easier to just see things. And that's kind of like why we have these stereotypes that are being associated with different groups of people and especially in the media, because like mm -hmm. you got to see it to believe it, according mm -hmm. to everybody. Um, so like, that's why like, it's, it's been so hard to per portray like, bisexual people and gender fluid people and pansexual people on TV because like it's so hard to really show it without explicitly saying I like more than one gender or I don't identify as male or female like it's 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 really difficult and I think like artists are trying to find a way to portray it but like also not be like obvious about it well yeah. you know what um Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think You're Steven wrong. Universe. I was just about to bring Steven that up. Universe has like they, they've uh, begun to sort of um, sort of show that and the different fusions yeah. that mm -hmm. happened, the gem fusions that happened on the show. Um, mm -hmm. Like I know, uh, is it like Pearl and Rose, or, or was it? Uh, it was a certain fusion. Like they tried to sort of like that's supposed to like represent like bisexuality, I guess, or was it? Which one was that? Uh, I. It was it was this one uh, fusion that they did on the show. Um, Do you remember which characters did it? I I, I think it was like it, it was either. All right, I, I'm probably thinking of like the red and the blue. Oh, Pearl ruby and, and uh, sapphire. Ruby and sapphire. Yeah, ruby and sapphire. To, um, I'm not sure if that was um, supposed to like illustrate like bisexual because uh, they're both they're both uh, they're both female, right? Yes. Okay, so yeah, that's. All right, so that it's technically they're all gems and don't have a gender, they don't but have, yeah. they project them. They project themselves as female. At least most of them do. Thank yeah. you yeah. for explaining that because I've never seen that yeah, I mean, that yeah. TV show. 
I've, yeah. I've heard it's really good. It's, but yeah, it's really good. It's like I it's, have too many other shows that I need to watch. It's <laughs> basically like you take like Adventure Time and like you take anime like Sailor Moon or like Dragon Ball Z. Actually, yeah, and that's like, a good yeah. way to put it. And mm-hmm. it's like a hodgepodge of like those like shows, and it's a, it's it's really good. Like, and it's it's, it's really so mature. Yeah, is it's it, really is, mature. It's, it's, it's not campy, is it? No. It, yeah, it's not. It can't, it, it gets it like just a smidge, but overall, no. Okay, yeah, because as with yeah. any kids show, it falls victim, you know, to certain tropes. But I think it's doing something really unique. Um, and is it okay if I butt in here? Yeah, well, yes, no, the, you're, you're what I was going to bring up actually was something completely different about that show. Was um, one of the only ever non-binary characters that I've seen in like modern day media is on Steven Universe, and it's the fusion between uh, Steven and Connie. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. That is a non-binary character. I totally forgot about that. I love I love Stevani. Like, <laughs> that's one of my favorite fu- fusions. Go ahead. I wish, I, wish, I wish there was more shows out there that, I mean, I, I know that there's a lot of shows that feature, you know, people from LGBTQ. I mean, I know that Grey's Anatomy has, you know, Tori, or no, Callie and, um, Arizona. I don't know if you guys watch that. My mom is obsessed with I it. Just remember the faces. No. Um, but yeah, so they, they have they have this one, and it was actually really interesting because it did that whole portrayal of her going through. You know, she was married to a guy, and then you know she you know she got divorced, and then she started experimenting. She thought she had feelings for this one person. Now she's married to Arizona. It was that really cool kind of transition? But again, it didn't happen until you fell in love with the character, and I think that's why I liked it was that, you know, it wasn't something that, you know, it was in your face. It was more of a transition, like it was a a nice evolution of the character and then you, you realize that and you already love her and that just makes you love her more. Um, That's really good yeah. because you get to know the person and not the sexuality. Which is how um, it happens in real life. Like, yes. I won't go up to you and go, Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm Bi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you know, it's it's subtle things. I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, I didn't come out to you. I think it was just, hey, that girl's hot. Oh, yeah. And then <laughs> a week later, we had a conversation, and then we're like, oh, okay, cool. That, yeah, that's happened to me multiple times <laughs> with has people. Anybody, has anybody here seen um, Dear White People? I just finished it. Oh, today. the show. The, the, show, the, the, show, the, the, the show. The movie. Oh, I haven't seen the show. Um, but yeah, there's actually this one storyline with one of the characters that I think we should probably. Lionel. Uh, yeah, Lionel. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Th- it was really um, his so storyline was yeah his storyline was really uh, interesting to watch because that was um, it's sort of like the same thing with Moonlight where you see like you know black uh, black queer characters sort of figuring out who they are but it, with this um, it was interesting and it was kind of hilarious like how like they showed him um, sort of figure out you know who he is like you know with his with this hot roommate mm-hmm. and like <laughs> there was one scene where he literally goes up to the laptop. And it's like, <laughs> it literally said, are you gay if you masturbate to your roommate who looks like a black Superman? <laughs> yes. And that was, you know, like it was, but it was really cool how like they showed him sort of going through the motions and like mm-hmm. him, and it didn't like, it took him a couple episodes, like, and I, and I love how like, Again, like he wasn't portrayed as like you know flaming or like anything like that, like any legal like he was just this little dorky boy that yeah. also likes boys. Yeah, there was a, there was a one line he said multiple times throughout that episode that like that struck with me, and he was like, "I just like people," and like yeah. every time somebody would like question him on his sexuality, he'd just be like, "I just like people," but then like I mean later on he finds out that he's gay, but like yeah. he likes people and there was also one scene where like he was it was literally like the test of sexuality apparently mm-hmm. and like um he goes to a theater party oh and my god he, dude. <laughs> he goes to a theater party <laughs> and he meets this couple yeah um and they um and i guess they wanted a th- they were like planning a threesome so they like yeah. took lionel back to their place and they started doing his stuff and he like stops like midway and he looks at the dude and he's like you're using her to get with me and <laughs> and the dude's like god damn it and like i guess he was like ratted out and he's like arguing with this girl yeah. and then like i guess in that moment when he was basically calling out this other guy he kind of figured out what he likes himself himself which is 
he likes dudes mm -hmm. and it was i think that was interesting because not a lot of people get that opportunity to be like hmm two people stand before me do i like one the other or both and like it was i don't think that happens like at all but like yeah. it was like really cool how that happened yeah see I think that recently, like, the portrayal of LGBTQ has improved. I grew when I grew up with Netflix, well, I didn't grow up with Netflix, but when Netflix was a thing, um, when it first started being a thing and you could stream, like, live or whatever the word is, um, it was, like, during that period where I was still kind of figuring everything out. And back then, I mean, it is still in now, especially in Netflix, is that they are LGBTQ movies weren't very diverse oh, they no. were it was it Not was it was, no. a, it was the same storyline almost or it was the same thing where it was a either a guy or a girl and it was like the evolution of their relationship and like one of them was like is uh, critically acclaimed it's like blue is the warmest color or something oh yes i've got some words to say about that one that one i Please everyone raved that. about that one everyone's like you gotta watch it and i like literally watched it i was like this is porn it's porn, it's good, but all I get from it is that being in a relationship with a girl is very hard work and that it inevitably never works out. And like, that crushed my soul. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. But then there, but there was that and then, you know, but a lot of them, and if it was a guy, it was in, based in high school and he did join the theater department and, you know, he did a play and, you know, it Suddenly was, he realizes he's gay. Or, or it's a musical. Yeah. And all it's all like, people in the theater department, right? Yeah. <sighs> At theater uh, majors, let me know. Right? Yeah. I didn't let know, know that people, gay people were allowed in theater. That's a joke if no one got that. <laughs> yeah, it looked at me kind of weird. Okay. Um, but yeah, so growing up, like, that's how I saw being gay was, was, mm. you know, you had to be in theater. Fun fact, I was known as the theater lesbian in my high school. Right. At the time, I, I considered myself straight, and I did not do theater. So tell me how that came about. Please tell me. The I don't theater know. lesbian, but you, okay. I didn't do made. theater. <laughs> I took pictures for a theater department, oh, and yes. I did sports. God, straight people there are just yeah, so they are. fucking... It's because you're a woman and you did sports. There's there's the gay. Yeah. Yep. Right there, I pinpointed. <laughs> you play the sport. Ooh, you must. But, but yeah, it's volleyball, sport, so I'm just going to see women in <laughs> yeah. athletes. Yes. Right. If you are an athlete, you are gay. Yeah. If you are a woman athlete, you are gay. Mm -hmm. And see, then if you're if you're a guy in theater... Oh yes, yeah, you are yeah. most definitely. If you don't play the sport, you like the dick. You know what this reminds me of, real quick? This reminds me of um, that one uh, scene from Tropic Thunder. It was uh, that one dude from like Percy Jackson or whatever. Like he was like it was the rapper character from Tropic Thunder where he uh, thought he was straight. Well, yeah, like he he was passing as straight, but like he's really gay. But like um, straight passing. <laughs> um, so like it was like a campfire scene, and like he was like, "Man, I can't wait to go home to Lionel." It was like, or no, I can't wait to go to Lance. And then like Robert Downey Jr.'s character, he was like, "Oh yeah, Lance." Wait a minute, what the fuck did I just hear, Lance? It's like, hey man, no, 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 I'm not gay. I love the pussy. And like he just <laughs> it was this whole thing. And then like he finally like Me yeah, that's school. sorry. <laughs> that's yeah, but anyway, if, if you had Oh yeah, something finally, to say, talk about yeah, blue is the warmest color. The, oh, okay. As far as blue is the warmest color goes. Yes, it's porn. Yes, I accidentally watched it on a huge ass TV in my family's living room. <laughs> what a huge oh, ass no. TV. <laughs> with your family? Oh, no, me. it was not with my family. Thank God. Who was it with? But it, I was by myself. Oh, I didn't realize I was putting porn did on the big screen. The, did you put the TV off? You know, like halfway through, yeah, I, I, I turned it off and I switched really to my laptop it. because I'm like, this is not working. Like, right. My mom's gonna walk in on like this full on three minute long like lesbian sex scene and just give me her look. And yeah. I knew what happened, so I shut it down. But what I wanted to say about that movie is it is tragedy porn for straight people. Mm. It is not for gay people. Mm. It is not for the LGBT community. It's for, I don't know, straight people who want to jack off to a couple lesbians getting it right. and then like cherish the fact that, you know, their relationship doesn't work out in the end. And it never will because that's like, that's the stereotype and that's like the same repeating you know plot that you're describing in all of these movies it's, it's like it's always, always a, a tragic ending it's they never end up together and it's always also like it's always it's it's never like 
them doing something that's you know cool it's like they're living their lives and right. which is great like i'm glad it portrays that but it's like a hyper sexualized version mm -hmm. of normal life <laughs> it's and, like this doesn't happen and and that oh, one scene what this this got me so bad because i was like what the fuck am i this is towards the end but like at one scene like they had gotten coffee and it was literally like in the middle of a cafe they were like this one girl like put her hand in the other girl's mouth and was just sucking on her fingers and i was like ew this should like this is in public yeah. <laughs> what the hell and it's just right. the weirdest thing and i'm like and and at the end the girl's like i'm with someone else and then walks so away <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No. but it was like the most sexualized like finger oh sucking I've ever seen in my life, and I was just like, "This is just." I think finger Dude, sucking in general is just is gross. gross. I just, but she was touching the cops. She was touching the table. Oh, oh god! god. Oh, god. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, why, why? Oh, Jesus Christ! Ooh, I have this gay movie I want to talk about. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> it's called um, Blind Eye, and I watched it specifically because the main character is a graphic designer, mm. and. Um, <laughs> and I thought it was going to be about this guy who's struggling with going blind and like his lover is just like, oh my God, my lover's going blind. It was not that at all. It was about, I mean, the guy was going blind, but it was like very rarely part of the story. It was mainly about this, like his past lover like comes down to visit him. No, his past lover like contacts him after like 10 years or something. And then they go off into the desert and they like talk out their situation while having multiple sex encounters. Mm. Um, and then like, I think in the end, the dude like calls his husband and is like, hey, we need to hang out more because his husband's like a filmmaker and like goes off to other countries or stuff. But like, I was I was really upset when I watched that movie because I really thought it was about to be this guy's lover struggling with his uh, partner going blind, but instead it was just about some dude's like sexual ex escapade that he had in college, and like suddenly it's being brought back up ten years later. Dude, I hate when like gay people are portrayed, portrayed in media of just like there's just these sexual deviants that yes. just can't <laughs> stop dicking people down or <laughs> getting dick down or, or, the, or getting dick down. You know, just anything in the world. They're just like always just oh, I need to have sex with my gay person so we can know we're gay more. <laughs> oh fuck, dude. The oh. gay gets oh, stronger the more we have sex. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's like a thing is that gay people and LGBT people in general are hypersexualized mm -hmm. and that's why it's not like quote unquote family friendly to say like hey i'm in the community because people hear that and they instantly think about you know raunchy sex yeah mm -hmm. raunchy sex because mm -hmm. that's what's portrayed that's what blue is the warmest color is that's what you know your movie blind eye mm -hmm. is. And I, would, I would love i would love to know because i personally have never had sex with a girl and i i've had sex with a guy but the way that I mean, I just I want to know like that's not how it is and I want to know like how people who actually had sex with the girls like How they like feel about that's how people think that their sex life is If that makes any sense. Can you repeat the question? Okay. Yeah, how they feel about what exactly? Like, how do they feel about sex? Like how like how It's Poor in quality sex on like how it's portrayed that makes sense uh, Does anyone get? But I can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you, so, are you saying, saying like, like realistic sex between a same-sex couple? Is yeah. That what you're yeah. Well, I think um, I can't really talk about experience from like fe for female to female, but I think even though I actually haven't had sex from male to male, but I've always it's always really kind of angered me that like usually sex like it's always same sex and they're always they do everything possible. They're just like, oh man, I just we I gotta just stick everything everywhere and just, um, oh man. But like, I mean, a lot of people aren't into that. Like some people aren't into, into butt stuff, you know? I don't know. I feel like this is your own personal agenda. Right, stop getting into the conversation. <laughs> <It's all laughs> the the Carter self agenda. Right. Everything I do is a self -insert. That was a weird question. We're just gonna scratch that. I didn't know what I was asking anyways. It, um, I actually have another uh, show, a really great show in terms of uh, representation. Um, it's a show called Orphan Black. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. I think I've heard of I've it. I watched the beginning, the beginning season, but I haven't watched. I've it. heard of it. I haven't seen it. Orphan Black is a fantastic show uh, in terms of um, like balanced and fleshed out LGBT uh, representation. Um, yeah, because there, there's like I think there's uh, yeah there's there, there's like 
two or three like LGBT characters. One of them is a clone. All right. So the basic uh, pre- um, premise of the show is that there is uh, this girl uh, named Sarah Manning, played by Tatiana Maslany, who I have a huge crush on. Um, <laughs> um, Make that known. <laughs> Um, so she one day discovers that, uh, she is a clone because she sees another person that looks just like her, uh, kill themselves on, uh, on a train track. And so, like, it's this huge, like, sci-fi conspiracy it's show. It's made by sci-fi, isn't it? Like, the sci-fi channel? No, it's on BBC America. Okay, uh, okay, that's what I thought. I, yeah. I wasn't sure. They're airing the final season right now. Um, but... It's it's like this really great like hard sci-fi. It, it delves into like you know cloning and like the nature of like human sexuality and like body mods and whatnot. It, it's like it's really gritty. Um, it's not for kids, <laughs> um, but yeah, like the the characters in that show they're very very fleshed out. They're layered, and um, I think that that's that that particular show is another sort of hallmark in terms of rep- representation. I'd just like mm-hmm. to point out that the past three what, the TV shows that we've said are a good representation of LGBTQ mm-hmm. are from England. <laughs> Yeah, they 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 know what they're doing. They know what's going on. They know what's going on. Well, I mean, well, um, Orphan Black is uh, Canadian. Uh, That's a Canadian uh, production. Still not American. So yeah, (laughs) still not American. But yeah, Yeah. but uh, no, but also Degrassi was um, not American. I I don't know. Canadian. It was Canadian, and and that one was actually. I thought it was a pretty okay representation of. I mean, of course, it was like very over the top, and everything about that show is. Well, if it's every if everything about the show is over the top, then, then I'll let it slide. But like, if it's yeah, just the gay thing, then... it, no, it's not. It's not just the gay thing, but it's the gay thing. But it's, <laughs> it's um, no, but like everything, like you know, they they had knives, they had shooters, they had yeah. suicides. Oh, wow. they have, it's there's That's everything. Sure. They have you know, um, they have quadriplegics. They have uh, is that the right word? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they have, they have a very, they, they had a very wide representation of very different things. They have people who have ADHD. Like, they, stop laughing. I'm I mean, sorry. the word that came to my head. No, it's violent. No, it's just because you said they have quadriplegics, and I, I just said under my breath, Drake. <laughs> yes. Um, but no, yeah. So they, I mean, they have a lot of different, like everything that could go wrong in that TV show has gone wrong. Mm-hmm. But um, I remember one season they had. Um, um, a trans um, person, and you know, it, the whole important you know, question was it actually played by a trans yes, actor? Yes, that is a very important question. No, I don't know. I I, I have no idea. Probably not. I mean, probably, not. probably not. Deep but side. um, mm-hmm. but the 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 cool but the, the thing that I liked about it was that it showed the struggles, and so you kind of felt like you could kind of like like oh crap, like that sucks. Um, but of course, everything that went wrong. For someone who is, you know, transgendered, went wrong for that person. Mm-hmm. So they had to deal with like the whole family issue, plus being beat up at school, plus you know all all things that you know could possibly be an issue for, you know, happened, and that's how it went over the top. But it was a good. It was yeah. it was a very wide representation of different types of people. Did you have something to say about it? Um. Yeah. Just as far as like trans characters in the media go, because I'm the only trans person in this room. Yeah. Um, True. Ooh, oh boy, that's a whole nother can of worms. Like, I love it trans is. representation, but when they keep casting cis actors yeah. as trans roles, it just further perpetuates that stereotype that, mm-hmm. oh, a trans person is only a cis person pretending to be the opposite gender. It doesn't matter, you know, that they're a woman. At it it matters that they were born as a man. Heavy air quotations. Um, because, you know, that's how they see them. They see a trans woman as a man in drag, you know, they don't see it as anything else. And so there was, um, a show on Netflix, I think it was called like the OA or something. I don't know if anyone here has seen it, but basically there's like this trans kid. He's like, you know, a 14 year old trans boy or something, you know, in high school, high school aged. Um, and they actually cast... Um, and it's an Asian American trans boy too, and they actually went out and they couldn't find any actors in Hollywood that fit the bill. And they went online and they were like, hey, does anyone want to audition for this role that fits this character? And you know, it was just like this random trans kid 
that like got the role and I loved that because having a trans person play a trans character is so vital because if cis people are stealing trans roles, what else do trans people have, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, why can't we play our own stories? Why can't we give voices to that? And I think also casting trans people as trans characters is important because nobody understands what it is to be trans except a trans person. Like, there's so much complexity to it. There's so much that you can't understand if you're, you know, just a cis person pretending to be trans. Wasn't um, one of the characters in Orf uh, Orange is the New Black? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't, she, isn't, isn't she a trans? Yeah. So that, yeah, Laverne Cox. Yeah, yes. she's a transgender woman. Also and a goddess. I am in love with you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, I'm glad that there's a push to kind of. I mean, of course, it's not as, as good as it should be, but. It just said five, five minutes. minutes. Okay. It just said five minutes. <laughs> 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 facing that way I'm sorry but yeah there's there's I mean I'm glad there's, there's a push and I think that you know having a successes like that will help curve it into the right direction and I hope so and if you'll notice like there's not any very successful movies recently that have been about trans people because I remember like maybe a year or two ago they tried to make one and it did eventually get made and I think it was um Oh, who's who's the Joker in Suicide Squad? Jared Leto. <laughs> Jared Leto. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! I think it was Jared Leto was playing like you know the lead, and yeah. he's playing like this transgender woman. Yeah. But I remember I was like on Tumblr at the time, and it was getting so much hate yeah. from the Tumblr community, being like, "Yeah, this is not. This already looks like a train yeah. wreck. You know, there's no trans people even writing this. Yep. Like everyone, Leave it up to Tumblr, everyone right. writing the script, everyone working on the movie is cis, and oh, like God. they portrayed yeah. it so badly, and it tanked because people don't want to see that. Yeah. Like they just don't. Wild. Yeah. Have you seen the Danish girl? Oh, pff, don't even get me started on this. I heard. I've never I have heard. not actually. I, I loved it. Did you not I like it? I totally didn't. I know, all right. So I have this thing. I have this weird thing with Eddie Redmayne, where like I love him. He, I, he. I'm sure he was cool and fantastic beast, but he just keeps playing fucking. I don't know. Like he. Say it. Say it. I can't. I don't understand what you're saying. He plays affectations, not characters. Like. What do you mean by that? I don't know. Like he just. Uh, going back to what you said, like the the whole thing with uh, representation, like how you get like cis uh, actors to play trans roles, right? Mm-hmm. Like I don't. So he was playing a trans woman, I assume. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so basically, the whole premise of the Danish girl, it's it's um it's. Uh, an interpretation of the life of the first person who underwent um, sexual reassignment. And so, you know, it was that whole struggle of them realizing that, you know, they, you know, she, the, at first the guy was married and, you know, had a wife and then, you know, she had him dress up as a girl to go to this party and then she had this whole other, like, she decided that she had this whole other persona, so like there was the guy and then this other persona, which was his true self, and it kind of just went through this evolution until he decided to get the um, sex reassignment. I thought it was a good, good. I didn't. I wouldn't say how I. I don't want to say how I feel about the portrayal of transgender in the movie because of the fact that I'm not transgender, so I don't know how accurate or inaccurate it was. But I did think that it was a a thing that got me got emotions out that, you know, I don't think that would have been portrayed. <clears throat> there was one there was one scene that happened in the movie that just like really I was not comfortable with. I, I caught it like on cable and like it, he would all right, so uh Eddie Redmayne's character was at a party. Uh they were I'm just gonna it is they I, the appropriate I'm, Yeah I, which one? Uh, Eddie? The Eddie Redmayne's character. Yeah, just, yeah. just say, yeah. well, was she? Well, if it's a trans woman, just say she. Yeah, so okay. wait, was she dressed up? Which, oh, yeah. At what part was it in the movie? It was like, I think it was like towards the middle. Like she was oh, at yeah, this so party. She. And I, um, so uh, I think Ben Wishaw was in the movie as well. So like she was getting hit on by Ben Wishaw. And like she, um, she was like, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. But then um, he said something along the lines of like, oh, but you're just so beautiful, I can't help myself. And I was like, what trans or no? Like that's just, I hate it, like, that's not cool. Like, oh, we're still the, cat oh, I know women. what you're talking about, but that, no, cause, so the, the thing that was with that was because of the fact that <clears throat> he knew that he, uh, that um, Eddie was, was a guy, or she was a guy. Okay, um, and so 
they, so he was hitting on her because he thought that he, she was gay yeah. when she gotcha. wasn't. And so, I, I, no, man, I just, I understand what you're saying. Like, that just, line kind of made me, I, it, can I just jump in here and correct your terminology? Uh, he knew that Eddie was like trans. You never want to like, if you know someone's assigned gender at birth, don't ever say like, oh, but they're really X. You have to say like, you know, assigned male at birth, assigned female at birth, or Wait, don't bring it up if it's not relevant, you know? Right. No, it was it was relevant because he thought, like the, the main character, the, the guy that was hitting on her thought that, that, thought that this trans woman character was a gay man. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, yes. oh. yeah, so, yeah, so you were right. I, I got confused. <laughs> All right, so to wrap it up, uh, guys, uh, real quick, uh, it, does anybody have anything that they want to see going forward from media? Accurately represented trans people, played by trans people. Yeah. More Save non-binary the- characters. I would also like them to, like, explain more. Like, I feel like there's not enough exp- explanation behind uh, the character. I, I, could, I could live without explanation. I don't really watch a film to learn about things. Mm-hmm. No, like, no, I mean, I mean, like... What do you mean? Like... Explain the, the the depth of the character. Oh, okay. Not 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 the yeah. you not know the terminology. terminology. No, I like, to oh, say yeah. like so, I don't need like to watch Moonlight and be like a gay person is someone who <laughs> have like, any subtitles yeah. at the bottom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I yeah. thought okay. So no, no, no. I, I meant, I meant you like mean. you know. I got you. Yeah. Oh, I got a big one. Say the word bisexual. God damn it, yes, we exist. Say sure. it. Say it. Say it. Too many shows have like had characters that. Like w- like more than one gender, but they refuse to say bisexual, and it irritates me so mm. much. But yes, that's it. Um, I would like to see. I'm a big proponent of diversity and representation. I would just like to see more diversity and representation in the media amongst the LGBTQ community. There, there are way more. Like there are black queer people. There are bisexuals. There are disabled trans people. Disabled people. people. There are you know people of all different shapes and sizes, whether they be skinny, muscular, fat. Um, you know. Um, also, them playing leads, not They're side playing, characters, yes, or you know those, you know the token best friend. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was the real. Wait, um, oh wait, oh, no, no, yeah, no, put, say say your, say what you want to say. Yeah, I I want to talk about how like I I think that definitely because um, when I was growing up, I didn't really understand a lot of gay stuff, and I think that shows that are more aimed towards people in the teenage area, especially because for most people that's, um, I shouldn't say for most or anything, but like that's around an age, um, also like younger adult, or young adult, no, young child. Yeah. Anyway, just anyway, just kids, uh, shows more directed towards the younger generation that yeah. explain it or show it. Like um, I know that like when I was a kid, uh, I was like, I think I was a, so- no, I was junior in high school. I watched Neon Genesis Evangelion and a uh, little Shinji boy uh, finds a cute little uh, uh, boy uh, towards the later end of the show. And that just really was like, it, it was like, yeah, yeah, someone else. Someone else is a little gay. And that made me feel really good as a kid. So uh, just more of that is really nice for people that don't, don't understand what, what's going on. All right, guys. So, yeah, that was this edition of The Real. Um, I'm not sure when we're going to record next. Probably, It's a safe bet to say probably at the start of next semester. We'll be back with more new episodes, more content for you guys. We have the whole crew back together. So, yeah, uh, we got some more stuff lined up for you guys. So, yeah, thank you for listening. Happy thank Pride. You. Happy Pride. Yes, happy Pride. Happy pride. Woo. Thank you for being you. I'm gay. I'm gay. I just want to put it out there that last night I, um, I drank three quarters of a whole bottle of wine and passed out at 6 p.m. Hey. Woo. Woo.